In this tutorial, you'll learn to add jQuery form validation, which is a great way to validate form data from front end. For this tutorial, I'm using PSV file, but you can also use it on a standard form file too. Welcome to Webtex Home. Here you can see I've already created a HTML form and styled it. You can get the source code for that in the description. There's an error on the linking.js file. Let's amend it. I've added ID to each of the input fields to retrieve data in the script. And I have added span class inside the form label to display error messages. And added a common class error to style it. So without wasting time in the design part, let's add scripts to validate the form, all right? Add script markup to add validation scripts. Let's create a function that runs once we click inside the input field for username and then click outside it. That's called focus out. And let's run a function in that case and let's name it check username. Hold the value that's typed inside the input field and test it with word. Type something inside the field and click outside. Okay, that's working. Then instead of alert, let's add some validation codes here. It will be like if the length of value is less than 5 or uh, greater than 20 characters and error messages will be displayed on the level of that username field. Let's test it then. It's working fine, but we want it to be removed when a valid length is input here. So we'll use jQuery hide for that. That's also working great, but if we retyped it to invalid length again, the error should appear. So modify it a bit more and check again. That's working great now. Let's add a variable to define there's error on this function in case there happens to be some error. That'll make our final validation function a lot easier. Let's make it a bit more proper. We'll set the error value true initially and after function runs, change it to false in case there's no error. Let's do the same for email too. Set error as default so that the form won't be submitted empty. Trigger dedicated function to validate email once the value is input. Create the function and add codes. Hold the email input value in a variable, then we'll check for the format of email. We'll check the position of add symbol on the email value and index of will help us in that one. Let's check in once. Okay, that's great. Go on to check the position of dot. And the last character of the value, you can check it with alert again. In case the character is not found, it will have written minus one. Now the validation logic for email. If at is the first character in the email value, uh, distance between the position of dot and at symbol is less than two, or the distance between the last character of the email value and the dot symbol is greater than three or less than two, the email will be invalid. This seems a bit complicated, but have a thorough look and it'll be always be the case of valid email address. Then set the error message and the error value as we did earlier. Test the code. Then go for the password validation. You can add a lot of constraints here like making some sort of characters or symbols compulsory. But I'm going for the length only. That's identical to the username. Let's give the character length to a minimum of 8. Test it. Let's change the input type to password from text. Let's go for confirm password then. Create a function to validate it. Okay. 
asked you, will only need to check if it matches the password value. Let's add a checkbox to view password too. Create a function that runs on click of the checkbox and test with it alert. Replace it with a code that changes the input type to text and vice versa. Test it again. Let's change the word C to view. Do the same for view confirm password too. Let's go to the top and add a bit of PSP code to display success message in case the form is submitted. Let's add an ID to the form to run a function that initiates all the validation functions before submitting the data. Then add a validation code that wraps all the validation functions and check for errors. Test it then. Okay, the test is successful, but the form is still being submitted. Replace alert with written true and false respectively. Let's write it the other way and make the message a bit smaller. and remove var from the variables test it and you're done so that's it thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel for more videos thank you